Hello, this is Denise with Poultry 101. Now, let me tell you something. There isn't a food stylist out there who hasn't been asked to paint a turkey or paint a chicken or paint a goose for a big holiday scene. This is an essential technique. And it was very funny because this year, a dear friend of mine who's not a stylist was offered a great deal of money to paint two turkeys that she would just drop off at a set. And she took the job, she bought our book, and then I gave her a couple of minutes in Messenger and she did the most beautiful job in the world. So I'm very proud of that. So here's what we've got. I got a chicken. Now the chicken comes right out of the package. This is nothing fancy here. It's raw chicken. Now my hands have got raw chicken and my earphone fell out. Hang on. I love the smell of raw chicken in the morning. Now, okay. Most of the time, you're styling in a studio that may or may not have, okay, a kitchen or a sink. So just think about that. When people say, why couldn't I eat that? Well, sanitation isn't the first thing we've got on our mind, okay? The first thing we have on our mind is to get a beautiful chicken, a golden brown. So here's what I've got. Patty bought these chickens for us. And guess what? This is a gorgeous chicken. And why do I say that? Look at the shape. Beautiful big breasts. Pretty little legs. Okay. He's already sitting on his wings, which is called trussing, which is how I was taught in a French cooking school. So uh, unless someone tells you they want the wings up, I usually truss my chickens like this. That way the camera gets this beautiful side like that, okay? Gets the hump, the shape of the chicken. If you do wanna keep the wing tips up, if someone said that to you, you wanna put some aluminum foil on the tips so they won't get too brown. It's a little before we're getting there, but I don't want to forget to tell you that. So here's what we're going to do. Raw chicken. I'm taking lemons and I'm shoving it in the cavity of my chicken because I want his breasts to be round and beautiful and not collapse on me. Because what happens when you cook a chicken for a long time? The skin comes back. The chicken collapses. It's not a pretty look. Oh, three may be enough. Now, I use lemons. Cindy, or an onion, Cindy often uses paper towels balled up. The chicken is not in the oven long enough to catch on fire, so don't worry about that. The reason I like lemons, I can cut this piece one more, is that if the chicken stays on set, which it's going to for a couple of hours, if it's a prop, it's gonna start to smell. And then sometimes you can spritz the inside and the lemon comes up and not the stench. Food styling is not the glamor job people think it is. And raw chicken or a rotting chicken. Now, why would you ever have a rotting chicken, you ask? Because there are budgets. So I need, and there's continuity. So I need to tell you, I have been on shoots where the two or three chickens that we colored, just like we're gonna do now, or painted, are now three days old. They still look the same, they smell. So you take a little folded paper towel with some Clorox or Pine Sol and you put it underneath the chicken and then it's not quite so offensive to the talent that is working around the chicken, okay? but. Why don't you just paint a new chicken? Because there's no more money in the budget to buy another chicken. And the executive producer has made that very clear to you. Now, they are good for a day, okay? If after we've painted it, you don't wanna, uh, I'm trussing up his legs. And the reason is, is that we don't want him to, oh, I hit the camera. We don't want him to splay, okay? That's, we're not looking inside the chicken. 
that's not pretty. So here's what I've done. I've taken some twine. You could do this any way you like. Sometimes I tie a bow, sometimes I um, make it tight. I will tell you this, it's easier to cut something off. So we'll use some twine and here we go. Sometimes I never untie the twine and the chicken goes right in front of the camera with a little bit of pretty brown twine, okay? So can you see that? Yes. Now, by the way, I need to tell you something. Patty must have been, Patty was thinking good thoughts. This is an absolutely beautiful chicken, okay? <laughs> now, and it also, I need you to know, came from one of the best grocery stores in Los Angeles and it cost $18. Okay, so not cheap. Sometimes you see chickens that, the, that look like they've been hit by a car and they're broken and that's a much harder chicken to make it look good, okay? So starting with the most beautiful product you can is one of the keys to successful food styling. And we've had, we had, Cindy and I had a client, there's a store here, I'm not going to say the name, but it's cheap, really, really cheap. King's Cheap or King, King, I Have Ugly Food. I'm not sure what the name of it's called, but we had a client that insisted on doing her own shopping because she thought it would be cheaper. And then she went to this place and she brought us food that was so ugly and also not broken down, like ribs that really needed to be cleaned and trimmed. Well, so she was paying us to trim the meat instead of paying a dollar more a pound to get meat that was already clean, a waste of money. So anyway, that's a discussion that you need to have with your clients. You need to educate your clients. And I may not have said that before, but I want to tell you something. I know the price of food. So if I was going to a shoot where I needed five chickens and I know there are 18 to $20 a piece, I can say to my client, well, we already have $100 just in the chickens. So we haven't talked about anything else yet. If you give a receipt to your clients and they thought you were just gonna you know, bring one chicken and I'm getting my sheet pan, if you're just gonna bring one chicken and be able to do that, they're gonna be so surprised and horrified when you turn in a receipt for two or $300. So best thing you can do, Tell your clients up front. Now, here's something that we're going to do. I'm going to take a little Pam. You can use olive oil. You can use Pam. And I'm going to spray him right now. And all I'm going to do is put this chicken in a 350 oven for about 20 minutes. And what happens? We're just steaming the skin. Okay. The chicken will still be as raw as raw can be. But he'll poof a little bit, and that's what we want, okay? So I believe that Cindy is gonna make the transfer here. Poor Cindy, poor Cindy and Patty. They have to do sound, props, shopping, change out. <laughs> so that chicken's going in the oven for 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, and then we'll look at him. Okay. This is, let me tell you something, which I have a couple of these. These are wet wet wipes, we all know these with what's been going, going, going on in our society. I can't tell you how difficult it is to work without a sink, but sometimes you're forced to. Sometimes they do, the production company doesn't ask and then you ask them and they say things like, oh, I'm sure there's a sink in the garage, but there isn't. Or you get to a TV station, there is no sink for you to use, so you, you depend on Windex and handy wipes and um, knowing that no one's gonna eat this food. The chicken has been in the oven for 20 minutes at 350. Aha, look at him. Now we have, this is a nice looking chicken. Um, the skin did not tear. You don't keep it in there any longer because you don't want the, the skin to tear, okay? or burst, which is what happens. So now I can start. Um, he's beautiful. This is, he's not real warm, okay? You can tell by bringing a cold chicken at 20 minutes for 350 degrees in an oven, he's just fine, okay? You don't want him real hot because the paint will run. So what is my paint? 
It is in a spray bottle, kitchen bouquet and water and a couple of drops of red food coloring. Now, you have to, t you have to decide what color do you want your chicken to be? Okay, do you want them on the light side? Do you want them on the dark side? Do you want a seasoning salt? Now, these are the questions that you can discuss with your client if it's a shoot like that. Or if you're producing your own image, what, what do you think looks good for a chicken? Okay, you don't want it so dark that you get into a lighting issue unless you're very, very skilled. Just a tip. Okay, so here's what I got. I'm spraying him. Okay, can you see that already? Yes, you can, because I'm looking in the camera. Now, at first it drips, okay? At first it drips, and then it will stick. Now, I need to share something with you. Everybody's gonna tell you a different way to paint a chicken, okay? I do it this way because it's fast and easy. Once you have painted a chicken, you can let it sit out for 12, 24 hours. It'll get a little bit darker. It'll start to smell eventually if you're in a very warm room. But if you leave it out and it's cool, it won't. Once you've painted it, though, you cannot re-refrigerate it because you're going to ruin the paint. Because what happens to the cold of the chicken? The skin will wrinkle and the paint won't look so pretty anymore. I think it's just like lipstick in the snow. I think it's just, if any of you, just like you look like if you've been freezing in the snow too long, you wouldn't look good, well, either does the chicken. Now, let me tell you something, and you can see it. In the beginning of food styling, and now I'm gonna add a little paprika, okay? Now what the paprika is gonna do I could add seasoning salt. I could add barbecue salt that would give it another color. The paprika is going to take adhere to that paint, isn't it? Paprika, I've never, I don't think I ever used paprika in my whole life except for food styling, though my mother used paprika on everything. When this, so see, you can see at the end, when I first started styling, 30, 35 years ago, I worked with, I apprenticed with several women. They would have made me take a piece of skin from another chicken part and wrap the knuckle, okay? And you literally took a thread and a needle because they didn't want to see that bone, okay? Now, have we learned some things? Yes. Has food styling loosened up? Absolutely. When the first time Cindy ever painted a chicken, we turned around and she, Cindy has wonderful hand-eye coordination, I think, but she had put so much paprika, it looked nuclear. Do you remember that? Thing? It was just like, ah! It was a little nuclear because she wasn't sure what she was doing yet. And another person that worked with us said, oh my God. And we said, no problem. And we took this chicken and we rinsed it off under you know under lukewarm water and guess what she she did it again and she did a great job so i wouldn't be too nervous now this technique that i'm showing you works for goose the only thing about a goose goose is really an oily skin so you can give it a bath beforehand a little warm water and soap suds and break down the fat in the goose skin Okay, we call it his bath. And so sure enough, it works for turkeys. It works for chicken. It works for a goose. You can do parts like this. I mean, that's why we call it poultry 101. Now I am using what happens is mixed with some of the actual chicken fat that was in the bottom of the pan from roasting it. Now I'm taking my brush and some more of the kitchen bouquet that's fallen back there. And now I'm just literally painting it, okay? Now this one, this particular, when I use the, I don't always use the drippings. This looks to me, and you decide, you'd need a picture. This looks just like a rotisserie chicken, okay, from Costco. Now, is that a good thing? Well, being that the one of the number one 
takeout food in America today, you guys, is a rotisserie chicken, whether it be the grocery store, Costco, small market, whatever you do, wherever you shop, okay? Now, we're gonna let them dry for a minute. I think you can see it. The camera is fantastic, Miss Cindy. This is, this is like a chicken camera. Now, I'll tell you what I didn't do because this was such a beautiful chicken. And this again, depends on what you see. See down here, lots of times I will pull up the skin and put a piece of cotton ball or cardboard or something so I don't have that indentation, okay? But what I'm gonna do with this chicken, I can tell you right now, is I'm concentrating on one side. And you know what? This side's the prettiest. I looked around and this side is the prettiest. And what I'm gonna do is put them on a platter this way with some garnish around them. Now, once that happens, you guys, this turkey will be good for hours. A chicken, excuse me. I'm so excited, Cindy. <laughs> I think I was getting a diamond bracelet. Now, so I'm gonna concentrate on one side, okay? I know that in the video, they've showed you many different chickens. Uh, there's gonna be pictures of all kinds of. If this, if you need to, if you're doing a recipe for uh, an author, you're gonna to try to match their recipe so that the chicken looks like that. Now, all that might entail is you cooked it a little bit longer or you used less paprika, okay? Now, I'll tell you what else is nice. This is the stage. We're gonna let them dry for a few minutes and then we're gonna, this is a wonderful time to add chopped herbs across the top, uh, crisp, beautiful shimmery sea salt, um, ground pepper, anything that gives that ridge a little bit of a highlight, okay? Now, we're gonna move them pretty soon to a platter so that I, one, don't make fingerprints, and two, uh, then start to work around because if I put some garnish, but he's doing just fine. Oh yeah, he looks good. That's pretty that like that. Um, you, and I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. You don't have to paint or agonize about anything that the camera doesn't see. Now, people think, oh no, I finished it the whole way. Well, let me just tell you something. If you're working on a wedding cake for a TV show, if they are only gonna see one side of it, you're only get how much time do you have? Why do I say stuff like that? How much time do you have? Okay, they don't, camera doesn't see it. You may not have time to work on it. Now, our next trip, we'll come back. We can paint him some more. We can spray him some more. But now I have a torch, okay? Torch. We're gonna tighten up his skin so he looks more cooked. Okay, you don't want to get the torch too close because you could make a split. Now, this is, now let me tell you something. This is my favorite torch top. It costs about 40 bucks. I think it's called a chef's maid or something like that. It's on amazon.com. But Cindy is building us a store. And the reason for that is so many people are unsure and they don't want to make the wrong purchase. So we're putting, putting it in a store. I don't know the camera. You're going to see that this is totally tightening up the skin. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Miss Cindy. Now, I'm gonna need a little more paint on the front, but now that I'm getting a sense of what's going on,
I want to show you, this is a, the reason I like this torch top is they last, okay? Cindy likes, and let me show you, this is called, oh, torch. <laughs> I thought it had another brand, but anyway, Cindy likes this one because you can control the flame a little more. Isn't that what you like, Cindy? Ooh, move it under here. Yeah. And this is fun because it's more like a pistol. <laughs> I've been re-watching The Sopranos, so I'm very involved with guns and pistols at the moment. Now, but you're going to find, you need to find out what kind of knives you like. What tweezers feel the most, the best to you. We are going to do an entire video on toolkits because... Everybody wants to know about the toolkit. But here's an example I just want to show you. All right. So I've just explained every food stylist is going to like certain tools. OK? And that's up to you. We will do a video, as I said, totally on kits and where you can buy things. I like a certain type of tweezer. Cindy likes a certain torch top. <laughs> Patty has a favorite knife. We it's only natural that we would all like something that makes us is comfortable in our hand when we're working. All right, now look at, I haven't done anything to the chicken for a few minutes. I'm just letting it sit. So he's, this is his best side, okay? If you can see him. Now, if you wanted a different look, then just don't use paprika. This side is not as colored as you can see, but if I, know that we're only gonna see one side of the chicken. I'm not working on the whole chicken, okay? So here's what we've got. Depending on who your client is, depending on if it's your blog, depending on you're a chef in a restaurant and you want it to be reflective of what your chicken looks like and that that chicken has uh, cracked pepper and herbs on it, add them, there's no problem. Okay, sometimes if we want to use herbs and it looks like it's been cooked with the chicken, we take a sheet pan and pan some rosemary or whatever we like, and then we add it to the chicken. So the whole idea of food styling is the control of it, okay? We don't want a big burn spot on this. When people are first learning and they go, oh, I hardly did anything to my chicken. Okay, I get that. And then you see the image and there's one big gigantic burn spot on it. And you know what? That's what the eye goes to. People don't say, oh, you know, um, gee, that chicken's nice and natural. People just say, oh, there's a big burn spot. So the whole thing we're always doing is controlling our product. Now, I want to show you this because it's fabulous. I, depending on what is the look? Okay, so we've established that this chicken looks like it could have been on a rotisserie. It could have been a chicken with some barbecue seasoning that mom put on it or dad put on it. So here's what I've got. I've got a beautiful, simple, this is an everyday platter, okay? Now, Patty went shopping for this video and look at these gorgeous green beans. Okay, so I've already lined up some green beans and I like this platter. What's another choice? This handmade cutting board. Oh my God, he's so big, he won't even fit in the screen. But here's the issue. My chicken is a little bit, this cutting board's a little bit big, okay? So I could push the chicken forward and fill up the back with grapes or fruit or garnish. So you need to know, you need to have an idea in your mind. Now that idea is either come from your client, from the recipe, from the ad agency. Like if, if Costco said, I want this ad to be that a mother took our roasted chicken, took it out of the package and put it on her own dish with fresh vegetables around it. Okay. And that's the order. And that's what you do. Meaning she didn't serve it in the plastic container. She upgraded it to a platter. So you need the story. Every picture tells a story. You need a story before you start plating your food. Now, these are gorgeous. These are off my Persian lime tree. So if we were doing, and 
Patty brought, look at this, if you can see these. Ooh. Now, we bring this to every shoot. Even if someone said, no, Denise, it sounds great. Let's put green beans with the chicken and then a big bowl of our mashed potatoes. And that's a complete meal. Fine. And the only problem is, what if they change their mind? What if they don't like the way this looks? You don't have time in the middle of a shoot to run to the store and buy anything else. So Patty roasted garlic for me because look how lovely that looks. We might still use a roasted garlic on our platter. Patty brought me, look at these little teeny baby tangerines. These are like one bite. And she also brought me beautiful grapes. I'm gonna tell you one thing, grapes never go wrong. Okay, groups have photo photogenic, they're pretty, and herbs. And this came, look at this sage. This is from Patty's garden, okay? I owe Patty for this. Now, but I have rosemary in my garden. So the decisions are not now, you guys. The decisions were before. Does that, I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, sometimes, and this is new, and this is just all about food stuff. I'll say to people that might have been, and you, you know, that might have been nice with roasted garlic. Oh, I didn't have any garlic and I didn't have time to go to the store. Okay. Or I was just shooting this or there wasn't garlic in the recipe or all. Now to me, you guys, and I'm not being mean, all of that is an excuse. Okay. You can either be prepared for the shoot and Again, if your client's paying for it, you've already warned them that it's going to be $100 at the store. So you've eliminated all the problems. So my feeling is, is it set yourself up for success, not for failure. To Because um, there's going to be plenty of failure. Okay, trust me. And one day when I've been drinking, I'll tell you the story of I hate hot dogs. I love to eat them. I hate to style hot dogs. It has nothing to do with the chicken. But I'm going to tell you this. When you're styling hot dogs that are gonna be blown up to be on the side of a truck and there isn't a decent hot dog bun in the whole <laughs> in the radius of 15 stores, you're gonna realize that things go wrong even with planning. Now, look at my chicken. He's beautiful. I've been working on this side. Look how beautiful he is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is this. Pick him up gingerly. Ooh, this is not easy. There we go. And put him right there. Now, I am not throwing this away because I may need this when I get him into the set to still keep coloring him, okay? You don't throw anything away, you guys. You just don't throw anything away because it may, you need it to come back to you. Now, I made a raft of green beans, okay? And now you can see that. And now I can see where I need to add some more. I gave him a raft. What's the good news? If he's got juices or liquid, it's going to flow into that, okay? So it's not gonna puddle on my plate. I could have also put a paper towel, but I made a raft so that if the camera saw anything, uh, they just saw green beans. A good photographer, a good photographer is going to really, one, train you, to look through the camera, help you learn to look through the camera. If you are the photographer, you need to train yourself to look at every aspect of your photograph. And, and I mean that in this respect. Recently, a young girl had wanted to, in our group, wanted to do her first hamburger. And she, she, she took everybody's direction, the stylist in the group, she did a wonderful job. The hamburger looks so much better, but she didn't know how to do a soft drink and she didn't know how to make the fries look better. So her hamburger looked fabulous, but the collateral food around it, not so much. And it's just because she's not used to doing it yet. So in the beginning, and this, and I mean this, if you're not sure, keep it simple, okay? Get up close to what you know looks good and keep it simple. People try to do too much and then they fail. And uh, now, because what are we selling? We're selling chicken. So I'm adding green beans. 
So they look nice there. I like, of course, these are Herico there. That's a small French green bean that still has the, where it came off the vine. Now, what it, that seems like such a little simple thing, but what does that little tip of the Herico there tell us? They're fresh, okay? They haven't been in a can. They haven't been in a freezer. So that's what I'm going for. Okay, now do I need some color? Sure. Well, what have I got for color? I've got little pieces of orange that could this be an orange tangerine marinade on this chicken? So if I add some tangerine pieces that goes with it, of course it could be. Again, all these decisions need to be made earlier. Now, not too shabby. I want to shoot them just like that. We are going to put them, and Cindy will do a little video of them. Um, you want to take as many. Now, I say this all the time, and I'm saying it again. After we took a picture, if we were in, that's kind of pretty, the top. If we were in a studio, we've already got the chicken. We've already got the mess. We could shoot it this way. I could take them and put them on another platter or on my cutting board and I could use the grapes that I've got. So instead of one, I, the hard work was painting the chicken. That's already done, okay? So now all I have to do is find some a different prop. Could I, at this stage, could I change the look of my chicken? Well, of course I could. I could pour a marinade over them and dry them on a sheet pan. I could use the torch again on them. I could make them more burned and less just simply brown. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, your choices are not limited, it's unlimited, okay? So that's what, I kind of like that. Now I need, I, need a pick there we go I'm gonna pull a few of these out now i'm breaking the line of my dish you may not like that you have to decide the more you style the more your own style will show up okay now i need something back here i'm not sure that i want to be so cutesy and just add some more um matchy matchy another piece of that, uh, maybe I do. There's a symmetry in that. There's a continuity in having that in two places. Oh, look it, this is what happens. Cindy has come and decided that I need lime slices for a little color. And of course, now what have we got? Lemon chicken. I love it, Cindy, thank you. These are beautiful. One of the other things, you guys, everything that you do, it's the prep, okay? It's your prep. So if the lime isn't perfect, you can make it perfect. Now I'm gonna take this guy and put him up this way so I get to have some light coming through the, these are actually, these are real lemons, aren't they, Cindy? Are these my Persian limes that are? Yeah, but they look like lemons. They look like lemons. These are, they, my husband grows these. My husband grows these beautiful Persian limes. He grows them for his tequila. How do you like that? It's very self-involved and I really appreciate it. I'm gonna use one more top. All right. If, the, if this is all again, you guys, oh, I put a bigger piece there, I like them. If your beans look too plain, add some shine, add some ground pepper. Add, a, add some red pepper flakes. Okay, that's all about your choices. All right, actually, Miss Cindy, I think this may be it. I may, I think this could be it. Denise, I had a question. Oh, oh please, Miss Patty is our audience. Those, <laughs> those, green, those green beans are so bright and vibrant. How oh, on earth did you do that? Oh my God, you know how I did it? I made Patty do it. No, <laughs> these are, again, when we talked before about knowing how to cook, these beans, these beautiful French green beans have just been blanched. Now, if you don't know that expression, hot 
water, hot salted water. You put a vegetable in it and it turns this color. And then you pull them out of the water and run cold water over them. Now in restaurants, if you ever worked in a restaurant, you work the line, you would take these blanched green beans and now you'd swing them when your guests came for in for dinner, you'd swing them in some hot butter or olive oil in a pan and you'd cook them for a few more minutes. And that's what's on the dinner plate. But all these are, are blanched. You know the part about food, and this is if you don't know how to cook, but I have to tell you something. With people that are learning, I always say the vegetables, the everything, it's gonna, the food's gonna tell you when it's cooked, okay? If you don't know the trick about pressing on a piece of beef to see if it's rare or raw or overcooked, the, the food will tell you, okay? And these beans had been cooked turn to this beautiful color. And then now all we'd have to do is swing them in a saute pan and we would have them perfect to eat. Of course, we like our vegetables here al dente in California. We don't cook vegetables as much as they might in other parts of the world. Last thing you would do, you would take a cosmetic sponge or a little piece of wipe and you would do the edges of your plate because chances are, now this was a little handy wipe so it's perfect. You could put rubbing alcohol on this. You could put Windex on this. Chances are you've gotten something on the edge of your plate, okay? When I, I'm gonna add one more piece of lime. When I do, you're gonna see. When things are not perfect, like the limes all of a sudden, and I'm gonna turn it around so you can see the front and then Cindy will take a video of it. When things are what I call topsy-turvy like this, it creates movement in your work, okay? And that's probably one of the hardest things when you first start styling. You need levels, okay? You need texture, and you need things that look like they're moving and not just dead on the plate. So, have I answered all the questions, girls? And what else do I need to? Uh, we just what had about chicken. Just had one thing. How would we protect this if it if we need it to last to the next day? Well, well, let me tell you something. There is time now for a brutal story, Cindy. If you watch the hamburger video, I talk too much. I apologize, but there's a lot of information. You would take this chicken, and you could literally drape it in a dry paper towel, not tight, and you could shove it in one of the biggest glad bags they make. I think it's the two, two gallons, something like that. We buy them all the time. Wouldn't refrigerate it. You could leave it on a table. The neck, if you were doing a, uh, the next morning, if that turkey chicken goose needed to go back out to the Hallmark movie buffet, you would spritz it with a little water or Pam. It would still look exactly the same way, okay? So that's when I say continuity. If I, if you, and also this is timing. I do not have time. They will not pay you guys, your client. And if you, I haven't mentioned this before. If you keep a film crew waiting, that's what they're gonna remember. They won't say things like later, like, God, that girl did a beautiful job or that man. What a beautiful table. They'll say, Jesus, that stylist that kept us waiting, okay? TV is sometimes figured at $10,000 a minute, okay? That's what all the crew costs. So if I couldn't save this, might I replace the lemons? Sure, if the lemons look bad, but you know what? The sage would probably still look the same because sage doesn't die. Not like parsley or something more fragile or durable would die in a heartbeat. But chances are I could stick this guy out there with a little spritz and he's gonna look just as good as he did the day before. So that's something, and we do it with all the food. When we have to show up at the end of a big commercial, Again, they want what they call, I named it this. I don't know if it was ever called this before, but we name it in commercials and in uh, infomercials. I call it the abodanza. And it's when everything reappears that was in the commercial or in the cooking show. You have it all out on a table and it's called the abodanza. Well, there would never be time to rebuild all those plates. So you need to protect them. Thank you, Patty. That's such a great question because, and again, you guys, when you're new in the business, 
you want everything to be perfect and you say things like, oh no, I need to redo that. Or I think the turkey's a little stinky or whatever. Huh? Well, of course the turkey's a little stinky. So you bring air freshener. I would always spray around where the get where the talent's sitting. And I would usually whisper to the talent, don't get too close to the turkey because the turkey smells. And this is my favorite, and we will end with this. I was in Pasadena. This was before Cindy came to work with me. So it's a long time ago. It was a pressure cooker before the Instapod. And Florence Henderson, lovely Florence Henderson, was the talent. And we turned out selling like 60,000 of these units the first weekend. So it was a huge success. But we'd shoved a chicken just like this in the pressure cooker. And her job was to take off the lid and say, oh my God, what a beautiful chicken. You know, it looked like that the first hour. On the third day of 118 degree heat, it stunk. And I need you to know, I, kept, I begged, I, I went and bought it on my own money. I begged the producer, I said, let's put a fresh chicken in there for, I had worked with Florence many times. I didn't want her subjected to that. He said, no, there's no time. We're just gonna use the chicken that's in the pot, okay? Now, this is a man that went on to make like $300 million. <laughs> I know, that's the disparity on this thing, but he wouldn't let me change out the chicken. I need you to know, I put Clorox cotton balls down there. I did everything I could in hopes that it wouldn't be grotesque for Florence Henderson. And the pro that she was, every time that lid came off was that glorious smile. And she said, oh, my God, I wish you could all smell this at home. It's it's dinner in a moment. And I, I, of course, was dying behind and thinking, oh my God, she's gonna gag or die. No, she didn't. But there was a cameraman that was on that shoot that kind of muttered something like, I hope I never work with you again as long as I live in Hollywood when he left. And I thought that was in poor taste, but life goes on. All right, I hope I answered all your chicken questions. Now, when you practice, we want you to come to our uh, Food Handbooks group Facebook page. Please, please load up a picture of your chicken. Um, if you practice, now I'll tell you something, there's nothing wrong with practicing and getting these pictures for your portfolio before you actually get a job. Trust me, it'll make you a better food stylist. We, you can reach out to us, you can ask us questions. It's all on Facebook, it's the Food Stylist Handbook group. And um, we wanna thank you for watching us. Bye-bye.